Today is Friday, March 10th, 2017. And today we got to talk about the attacks that have rocked Germany over the past 24 to 48 hours. Now, I was going to do a video yesterday about this, about the axe attack in Dusseldorf at the train station. But something told me, hey, wait a minute, get a little bit more information so you'd be able to get a better video out of it. Now, I had no idea that there was going to be more attacks and more other things that happened right around the same time. Now, before I go too deep into it, what I want to do right now is show you a quick clip. Now, this clip is only of the axe attack that happened in Dusseldorf, but there were two more attacks we'll talk about after we get done with the video. And we'll also talk about this whole problem in general in a greater context as it relates to Western Europe and also the United States and our role in it. So without further ado, go ahead and roll it. And bloodshed when a man jumps off a train and starts slashing people with an axe. Anti terror police in Dusseldorf, Germany, rushing inside as passengers run for their lives. At least seven people, including two officers and a 13 year old girl, are hurt this morning. The suspect, who police say has mental health problems, was arrested after jumping off a bridge trying to escape. Authorities do not believe that this was terror related. Okay, so you see what's happening. You see what's happening with that one attack. That is just one of three attacks that have happened within the past about 24 to 48 hours. I think probably 24 hours. And, you know, of course, the media over there in Germany and here in the United States, or we got to say, oh, it was not terror related or we don't think it was terror related, even though it obviously was. This is not the first time this has happened in Germany, an axe attack on a train or somewhere nearby a train. Right. It's always the same kind of people that do it now. They have arrested a person that was responsible. They say he was a mentally ill person from Kosovo who was seeking asylum in Germany, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not quite sure about the asylum part. I've heard that from various sources. But I know one thing I've heard universally is that the guy is from Kosovo. If you know anything about Europe, like I do, Kosovo is a majority Muslim part of Europe. It's like a breakaway part of Serbia. But that's a whole different story. We got to talk about Yugoslavia and that whole conflict in the region, the Balkan, the Balkan Wars. So I'm going to digress away from that point. The whole point is that Kosovo is a majority Muslim place. And the guy allegedly was seeking asylum in Germany. So, again, this is not the first time this has happened as far as an axe attack. And it's most certainly not the first time this has happened in Germany as far as an axe attack from a person seeking asylum that is of Islamic origin. Regardless of where they come from, it's not even really a race thing because obviously Kosovo is in Europe. But people coming from North Africa, East Africa, the Middle East, parts of Europe that are Muslim dominated. It's like they're coming to Germany. It's like a moth to a flame. It's like they're attracted to Germany for some reason. Maybe it's because you have people like Angela Merkel and some of the other leaders in that region saying, hey, come on over here. We'll give you asylum. It's obviously not working out because there was another attack in Dusseldorf where the axe attack happened on a train station, not far from the train station where an 80 year old man was attacked with a machete. Now, I'm not quite sure if the man lived or died. I'll probably place that on the screen before you and also in the box below. But an 80 year old man was attacked with a machete. So similar thing happened. Now, I'm not sure who that was that did it. I don't think they've caught them quite yet. But we could pretty much put two and two together. We know who it was. And there was another attack that happened in Hamburg where you had a gas attack on a train. I think it was three or more people caught and none of them had Western names. They all had uh, Middle Eastern and African names. So you already know who it was. This is a consistent pattern that happens over and over and over again, not just in Germany, but also in Sweden, sometimes uh, Denmark, Norway, definitely in France, UK. Not so much about the terror attacks, but the general risk of Islamic invasion. Now, me, I'm not somebody that's an Islamophobe or a racist or a sexist or any kind of ist, ob, or obic. But at a certain point, you must examine the pattern. You have to be able to see what a pattern is to be able to understand how to fix whatever problem was going on. All right. That's why you have so many people in Europe that are rising as far as leadership is concerned. Leaders are rising in Europe that are more nationalist. Because what other way do you have to protect your country from outside invaders that don't mean you any good, right? You can't have your borders open to everybody. And then what you get as a result is pure chaos and not have any kind of backlash against the chaos. 
Nobody, I don't care who you are, where you come from, what religion you are, nobody wants chaos in their country. Everybody wants their country to get along just fine, which is why when you go to Saudi Arabia, you must abide by their laws. If you're a woman in Saudi Arabia, you can't just go into a store by yourself and all that. Nah, they have certain rules and you got to abide by. And I have no problem with that. If you say women can't drive, if you say women can't go into a store by themselves, that's fine. Because guess what? That's their country. They can do whatever they want. Now, the problem comes when they try to come to our country and say they're going to do that there. No, no, no. We don't do that here. We let women do whatever they want here. We let women go wherever they want here. If you want to have women basically at the back of the bus or not being able to get on the bus, that is your prerogative. And that's fine. But don't bring that here. And therein lies the conflict between the Islamic cultures and Western cultures. And many Western countries have got it figured out. A lot of countries in Europe, especially over in Eastern Europe, and maybe some, maybe even some in Western Europe, they're starting to figure it out. You got to reduce the immigration. You most certainly got to reduce the uh, asylum seekers and the so-called migrants. You have to reduce it. You got to be able to police your border effectively because what you're going to get in return if you do not police yourself and your border effectively is chaos. You're going to get two-year-old little kids gassed with tear gas on a train in Germany. You're going to get 80 year old men attacked in Hamburg with a machete. You're going to get a bunch of passengers scared, running for their lives, being attacked by a, a person from Kosovo that is trying to seek asylum with an ax. That's just common logic and basic sense to me. I don't see how anybody could see anything different from that, but who am I? I just think that this problem can be solved with very basic and simple remedies. But when you have leaders like, uh, Bill Clinton, for example, talking about nationalism brings us to the brink of despair, to the brink of, you know, the end of society or something like that. Whatever you said, I placed that on the screen before you. But words like that, rhetoric like that from these people that are not even in power anymore, but just happen to have a high platform and people pay them attention. Stuff like that makes it more difficult for people to be able to protect themselves and their country. And it taxes the military of the world the U.S. and other places, because let's look at it like this as I close. If we go to Syria un unnecessarily, we engage in a war there and then people are flushed out. It, it it allows for people to have an excuse to bring other people that are not Syrian in that influx of migrants to Europe and also to the Americas. Right. Because the countries that are allowing them in feel sympathetic towards what's going on. See, it's a cycle. And it's really something that has to get stopped. You got to stop it on a couple of fronts. Stop the war going on unnecessarily in the Middle East and also stop the just the, the bleeding heart nature of many people in Europe, many other leaders in Europe. I got a lot of hate on my previous video about um, last night in Sweden. I don't understand why I'm saying I don't want any country on Earth. It doesn't matter what color the country is to participate in their own destruction. I mean, it doesn't really make any sense to me. If you see in Sweden, if you see in Germany, if you see in France, if you see in UK, that a lot of crime is coming from people that have recently come to the country, wouldn't it make sense to not allow them to come in? I mean, no country is crime free. I'm not saying that if you eliminate the refugees from your country, that the crime will go away. No, of course not. But obviously the crime wave that's happening due to the refugees would die down or go away once you do not allow them in the country anymore. It's very simple and it's very basic. These attacks in Germany have been happening for a while. I don't think they will subside until something is done to stem the tide of the flow of these people into the country. Because what they do, they congregate together. They all come to live in like little enclaves across the country. Little Mogadishu, little Karachi, little Tehran, little Kabul, all over the place. And the truth is, you're going to get a lot of people that come over that don't really want to do any harm. You're just trying to get money and send it back to their family. But you also get a lot of terrorists, a lot of people that are vicious criminals that should not be in there. Because that's what happens when you're not able to vet those who come into your country. When you allow people just to come in, just like water from a waterfall into a valley, you have no idea what you're going to get. So that's pretty much all I got to say about it. What say you? Do you think that these attacks in Germany over the past 24 to 48 hours serve as a wake up call that's been happening, if not just a couple of days for years. These things have been going on for an extended period of time 
and these recent attacks are just more of the same? Or do you think that I'm being somehow a racist here to point out the fact that a lot of the crime wave that's happening in Europe in countries like Germany, Sweden, France, UK are happening as a result of the migration crisis? I mean, the proof is in the pudding. Like I said, in the gas attack, you had people that were arrested in the early uh, 20s, late teens. They all come from North Africa, Middle East. And the same thing happened with the axe attack in Dusseldorf on the train station. That person came from Kosovo and it was an asylum seeker. So obviously there's a pattern. Those are two incidents that happened, but they are just two of many that have been happening over and over and over again. But if I'm racist to pointing out a pattern, please explain to me why that is racist to point out an obvious fact. But whatever your comments are, let me know in the comments below. That's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace.